Hey, little birdie, don't feel down. Come and perch on my shoulder. Don't be shy. I'll show you around town. Really? No wonder they never pay attention to me. Ah, uh, forget it. I probably shouldn't be anthropomorphizing them anyway. Haven't seen you in some time. To which one of the Animo Archons wins do I owe the honor? Oh, is this your way of saying that you missed me? Since it wasn't meant to be with this little birdie, I'd better leave it alone. Let's take a walk, shall we? If you're wondering why I'm here, Jean's been worrying about trade safety recently. I discovered this when I unwittingly burst into her office to save the day. Another job involving long-distance travel falls to me. I suppose it's my own fault for having such a strong sense of duty. Still, on the bright side, business is now taken care of. And I have unused travel funds, so I was planning to... Gundafar, we are in the middle of a war. Your place is at the front lines by my son's side. Pray tell what provokes your unwarranted return to the palace. A matter of utmost importance, your majesty. Such that I must personally report it to you. Huh. Outdoor theater. Looks fun. Ah, yes. Here's what I was thinking about the unused funds. Given that the acting Grand Master saw fit to allocate these funds to my trip in the first place, I think it's my responsibility to make sure that every last Mora is put to good use. In other words, what do you say we find a way to spend the remaining budget? Perhaps a fancy meal at a nice restaurant? Or a river cruise that takes in the sights of Sumeru City? Or we could buy a few nice mementos to take home. Hey, no need to put it like that. Let's keep walking. We can consider it some more on the road. The rules of the Knights of Favonia state that any and all expenditures during a business trip are counted as travel expenses. That's more than enough justification to live a little. Of course, with me being here on my own, it was looking like a wasted opportunity. But now that I've run into you, why don't we make this a joint trip? What you see is what we've got. Feel free to look around. You're always so busy. It's high time you gave yourself a proper break. Even the sharpest blade loses its edge if it's always in use. Regular maintenance is essential for reliable performance. And anyway, life is short, so we should make the most of the time we have. Right now is the perfect time to relax and enjoy ourselves. And who knows how many other chances we'll get. So come on, what do you say? Great! Music to my ears. I'll cover the travel costs, of course. There's nothing more enjoyable than the company of a good friend. Let's call this a nice little excursion to round off my long business trip. Now, let me think where we should go. Hmm. I've seen a lot of Sumeru already, so let's go for someplace new. How about Liyue? I'd be heading past there on my way back to Mondstadt anyway, so it's not out of the way. <laughs> well, lucky me. I'll hold you to that. Liyue's Ministry of Civil Affairs frequently corresponds with the Knights of Favonius, so the address on their letterhead is one of the few places I'm familiar with. I don't have much luggage, so it won't take me long to pack. Give me a moment, and then we'll head there together. I've heard that there's lots to see and do in Liyue, but I'm sure you're more familiar with the place than I am, so I'll leave the itinerary to you. Excellent. Well, hopefully I'll get to know some of these friends for myself. It's such a satisfying feeling to just drop everything, go on a long trip, and see something new. Who knows who we might cross paths with? We might even end up going on an impromptu adventure. 
Just like how I met you in Port Omos, and now we're here. Come on, let's see what's up ahead. Do you know this shop? It looks pretty nice from the outside. Shall we take a look? Welcome to Mingxing Jewelry. We are a long-established trader of precious stones. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Hmm, let me see. Ah, some nice jewelry you've got here. Maybe I can grab something with a local flavor as a souvenir. What do you think, Traveler? See anything that suits my style? I trust your judgment. Ah, oh, you're interested in souvenirs. If you're struggling to decide, you might want to consider getting some jade. You can't go wrong with a nice jade pendant. They're an elegant addition to your look, whatever your age or gender. If you're looking for a specific design, we can make it to your specifications. It does take some time to fulfill an order, however. High quality jade is hard to come by, so our waiting list is at least a couple of weeks. Oh, that's a pity. I'm just visiting and I won't be in town for very long. So as much as it pains me to do so, I'm afraid I'll have to leave this beautiful bijou behind. No worries at all, sir. If you're looking for something off the shelf, why not go and see Mr. Shirto at the Jade Mystery? He also deals in jade and precious stones. Exactly. But on that note, let me give you a word of advice. There's no risk in purchasing a piece of jade that's already been cut. But you could lose all of your mora betting on uncut rocks. <laughs> I won't say any more, as I don't want my fellow vendors to think I'm bad-mouthing them. But I think you catch my drift. It's only human nature to spend a little when you're on a trip. But don't be too hasty to part with your cash. The Ministry of Civil Affairs takes everyone's economic well-being very seriously, and they often send out the Millilith to spread public awareness of well-known scams. As guests here, I'd encourage you to watch out for anyone trying to rip you off. I think that's sound advice wherever you go into that. We appreciate it, boss. Welcome! Looking for uncut stones or pre-cut jade? We've got plenty of both for your viewing pleasure. Uncut stones? Ah oh, yes, we were just briefed on that. Hmm. Let's take a look at the pre-cut jade. I believe I detect a quiet but distinct tone of apprehension in your words. Please rest assured, there's nothing to be quite so wary about with my business. Feel free to peruse at your leisure. I think you'll find that everything I do here is entirely above board and legitimate, and I sell only pure and unadulterated goods. No scam guaranteed. Sure, you can bet on Jade and lose if you're unlucky, but that doesn't make it a scam. My terms are clear and transparent, and I only do business with willing customers. What scammer can claim that? Sounds perfectly reasonable. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much the vendor is charging. If the customer decides to hand over their money, they're taking the bait of their own free will. Yes, exactly. I'm glad you understand. Although your peculiar phrasing at the end there, you almost make it sound as if I really am scamming people. 
Anyway, betting on Jade is what it is. Feel free to try your luck, but if you can't afford to lose, then it's not for you. We don't need to cause each other any trouble. I'll leave you to browse at your own pace now while I deal with other potential customers. Hmm, amber-colored Jade would probably make for a good souvenir. Why not? This is a quirky little place. Somehow, I'm inclined to entertain him for a bit. Well, if you're not interested, then I guess we'll pass. Ahoy there, Captain! Uh, fancy seeing you back in town. <laughs> uh, struck any gold lately? What, a poor sailor like me? You must be joking. I barely managed to make ends meet. What about you, Chateau? Still scamming people with your pile of rocks? Hey! Keep your voice down. Can't you see I've got customers? But more to the point, when have you ever seen a customer get scammed in my store? I mean, you want the full list? Or... Hold up. Is that... Captain Kaya! What, uh, brings you to Liyue? <laughs> oh, just taking a short trip with my friend. It's been a while. Yes, it's been a good while, hasn't it? <laughs> Anywhere you'd recommend I visit while I'm here? Let me think. Wanmin Restaurant's always a pretty good bet. Chef Mao's daughter is a skilled chef, and their prices are very reasonable. My wife can't get enough of their boiled fish. You could give that a try. And, uh, speaking of my wife, she won't let me forget what a great help you've been to us before. So thank you, on her behalf. Your wife? Ah, uh, yes. How is she doing these days? Keeping well? Very well, thank you. Very well. Anyway, uh, I've got something I need to do down at the South Wharf, so my apologies, Captain Kaya, but I'd better get going. All right. See you. Ah, I finally remembered who that was. Captain Wu. He runs a transport business between Mondstadt and Liyue. I see. So you went through that whole conversation with no idea who you were talking to. Well, that explains the generic pleasantries, and the general awkwardness. Old Wu's usually quite the chatterbox, so it's very unusual for him to just take off mid-conversation. How exactly do you two know each other, anyway? Nope, that's not it. I don't give out loans. It's pretty straightforward, honestly. The captain was making a delivery to Mondstadt when his ship sprang a leak. He overexerted himself fixing it and keeping the cargo dry, and ended up passing out from exhaustion. I took him to Mondstadt to recover. Hmm, well, it still seems strange to me. Sure, he's hardly the most charming conversationalist, and he's also mighty stubborn, but all of us know Old Wu is an honest and kind-hearted man. His eldest was once playing on that big rock over there when he took a tumble and injured himself. I helped to patch the kid up, and the next day, Old Wu was here to buy a couple of uncut stones. I'm just surprised he was so quick to excuse himself, that's all. Normally, he's the kind of guy who, if you run into him on the street and he owes you a favor, he'll grab you by the hand and thank you profusely until you ask him to stop. Well, stubborn, I can believe. <laughs> Someone had drilled a gaping hole in his ship, and the water was coming in fast. How he managed to make it all the way to Mondstadt, not to mention with his cargo intact, I have no idea. Someone drilled a hole in his ship? Oh dear. It must have been one of the less savory captains out there trying to sabotage his business so they can squeeze their way into the market. When competition is stiff, sometimes things get ugly. It's the way of the world, unfortunately. His line of work isn't easy. The poor fellow usually has to set sail before the break of dawn. He's been loitering around a lot these past few weeks, though. I thought maybe he'd come into some Mora. Competition is fierce these days, and there's not a lot of Mora to be made in shipping. So every day he stays idle is another negative in the books. I do wonder what's gotten into him. Anyway, I digress. We merchants protect our goods like our own lives, so who knows? Maybe he had some important cargo to see to. <laughs> Either way, good sir, don't mind him. <laughs> I am an upstanding member of the Knights of Favonius, after all. Just look me in the eyes. Don't you find me trustworthy? 
Since you asked about recommendations earlier, you're here from Mondstadt, yes? Might I suggest the tea house is somewhere to rest your legs? If memory serves, they're just about to retell the tale of Bravebeard the Valiant from the top. Why not pay them a visit? Huh. Sounds interesting enough. Let's check it out. This is the Huyu Tea House. Ah, we meet again, Captain Kaya. What a coincidence. Twice in one day. <laughs> oh, that didn't take me long, and I ran the whole way. Uh, Woo, weren't you just at Wanwen Bookhouse buying a book for your daughter? What's this talk about the wharf? Shh, just leave it be, Aunt Jong. <laughs> There's no need to embarrass him right in front of everyone else. I take it that you two aren't from around these parts. I'm a caravan guard by trade, and meeting people from all over the world is one of the main perks of the job for me. Why don't you join my table so we can get to know each other? Oh, uh -huh. seems like the tea house is the place to be in Liyue. Feels like I'm back in the angel share. Did you manage to get something for your daughter just now, Captain Wu? Yes, thank you. If it weren't for you, Captain Kaya, she might not have even made it into this world. I'm so lost, Wu. What's the story here? <sighs> Your wife's originally from Mondstadt, isn't she? Did you run into Captain Kai when you were there on business, or when you were visiting the in-laws? <sighs> the latter. Oh, this is so humiliating. Anyway, back when my wife was pregnant, we were taking a trip to Mondstadt to visit her parents this one time, when we were mugged by a group of treasure hoarders near Dawn Winery. Oh, that sounds awful. Were either of you hurt? I mean, he's still here, and he's still got all his limbs, so they can't have roughed him up too bad. I'm guessing Captain Kaya stepped in before they could do either of you any serious harm, huh? Yes, he did. Thankfully, he heard my wife crying for help and drove them away. My wife was injured and quite shaken up by the ordeal, so he took her to the winery and asked them to look after her. Uh, so... What happened to you? Where did you disappear to? I... I was in the water. Huh? What did you jump in the water for? You know they can still get you in there, right? No, that's not... I... I did... They threw me into the water and, uh, stripped me of all my clothes. <laughs> they did what? <laughs> did they have a weird fetish or something? Stripping a sailor naked and throwing him into the water... <laughs> It's not like you were going to drown. So, then what? I take it you swam to shore? The treasure hoarders always move in groups, and fighting back when you're outnumbered isn't usually an option. It's no surprise that they quickly overpowered Captain Wu. I'm just glad that everyone made it out all right at the end. Captain Kaya, please, there's no need for you to try to save face for me like this. I already owe you so much. You don't have to do anything more. Yet, despite that, I somehow only ended up humiliating myself further. Oh, there's no point in me trying to save face now. They tossed me into the water to humiliate me, and to use it as leverage to get my wife to pay up. But they didn't know that I could swim. What I'd intended was to pretend to drown, then sneak back onto shore while they weren't looking, and find a way to rescue my wife. That was before Captain Kaya appeared out of nowhere and saved the day. 
So then, I figured I'd get out of the water, get dressed, and catch up with you. But God knows what they did with my clothes. I couldn't find them anywhere. By the time I gave up looking for them, you were most of the way to the winery. So, I had to run after you with nary a thing on myself. <laughs> Outrageous! <laughs> so, uh, what happened next? I made it to the winery, but the maids noticed me first. And they called the Lord of the Manor out to give me the beating the treasure hoarders never got around to. After my wife recovered consciousness, she had to have a long talk with the young lord to explain everything. He then escorted us both safely to Stonegate. <laughs> oh, whoa. Well, I'm sorry. But... <laughs> Ugh, good luck living that one down. Trust me, I know. My wife never lets me forget. Ugh. I'm sorry, Captain. I wasn't intending to share that story. It's fine. It's my own fault for thinking I could sweep it under the carpet and forget about it. I don't know if I can ever repay you for all you've done. That's why I get so embarrassed every time I run into you. Still, it won't stop me from trying. You and your friend are here to catch the storyteller, right? The tea's on me. It's the least I can do. In fact, they do serve some food here, too, but it's not the best. Okay, let me run and get some fruit to share. I'll be right back. I wonder how much Van Arya caught of that. Old Wu really has no filter, does he? Oh, poor Wu. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. It's just... <laughs> he really didn't have to share all the details of that story. But since he didn't seem to mind, I wasn't about to stop him. I did actually forget it first. But once he brought up his daughter, the memory of his naked escapades came flooding back. <laughs> Diluc thought some pervert was harassing the maids. He charged straight out the door, great sword in hand and raring to go. I haven't seen him so angry in a long time. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> so many people owe me favors nowadays. It's hard to keep track of them all. I really should go check my favors ledger once I'm back and Refresh my memory. Hey, you didn't think I was being serious, did you? Do I really strike you as the kind of person to keep track of favors in a notebook? I just helped the guy out on a couple of occasions because I happened to be in the right place at the right time. I have no intention of asking him to do anything for me in return. At least, not so far. I'm back with fruit. Please, help yourselves, everyone. My treat. Thank you. Oh, don't mention it. It's just a few fruits, nothing extravagant. Once my new pharmaceutical business takes off and I have Mora to spare, I'll get you a proper thank you gift and send it to the Knights of Favonius. Pharmaceutical business? So you found a new career? No more shipping? Uh, shipping's impossible work nowadays. There's too much competition and the margins are too small. So, I've decided to switch gears. I'm going to become a partner of Boo Boo Pharmacy and provide funding for a brand new medication they're producing. It's specially formulated to treat seasonal joint and limb pain. If you didn't know, it's a very common health complaint among sailors, but also extremely difficult to treat. I've suffered from it myself, which is why I know that a lot of people stand to benefit from this once it enters the market. It's a good cause and a stable source of income. Whichever way you look at it, it's a step up from the back-breaking work I did before. I've already had some talks and invested one million Mora for the first round of funding. That's impressive, Wu. I wouldn't have thought you had the connections for something like that. So is it Dr. Baiju that you're in talks with? Oh no, not Dr. Baiju. Actually, it was his master, Dr. Baifudze. His medical expertise and clinical experience are second to none. And he really cares about his patients. 
He gave me a few of his traditionally formulated bone strengthening pills when he saw me suffering from my leg pains one day. It was like a miracle cure. The pain immediately went away. Dr. Baiju's master. Yeah. I told him I'd be enthusiastically recommending his medicine to the other guys at the docks. And after some hesitation, he just went right ahead and wrote up a prescription for me, completely for free. He said that he shouldn't really be handing out free prescriptions since, and I quote, it goes against generations of tradition handed down by our forebears. But he just felt like it was the right thing to do. <laughs> what a great guy. Ah. Uh. But I got chatting with Dr. Baiju recently when the Secure Transport Agency did a delivery for Boo Boo Pharmacy. He told me that his master has already passed away. Huh? Why would he say something like that? I mean, the guy's old, but he's still in great health. Captain Wu, where did you meet this old master? Uh, just out on the street? I know that sounds dubious, but this is an educated and respectable gentleman we're talking about. There's no faking that. <sighs> Hold on a second. I just remembered something. My nephew-in-law met a medicine seller not too long ago, too. He also described it as a miracle cure. He spent a lot of mora on it, but when he brought it to Boo Boo Pharmacy, Herbalist Gui took one look and told him he'd bought nothing but regular painkillers. This Bai Fuzu you met. Did he by any chance have a goatee and salt and pepper hair? He did. If I may, Captain Wu, there's a lot of mora involved here. It seems like it would be worth asking this Dr. Baiju about his master, just to set the record straight. You could show him the medicine as well. Clearly there's some misunderstanding here. You're right, Captain Kaya. A quick trip to Boo Boo Pharmacy and I can get Dr. Baiju to clear all of this up. I'm sure it's all... I mean, hopefully it's all fine. He left in a hurry. He must be stressed out of his mind right now. Hey, let him deal with this, okay? No point in you stressing yourself out too. Fraud or not, it's up to Captain Wu to figure out exactly who he's gotten himself involved with. I'm no Dark Knight hero, or a martial arts hero for that matter, and neither are you. Wait, where are you? Now that I think about it, I can see you having a secret double life as a martial arts hero here in Liyue. You certainly have the personality for it. Either way, Liyue has its own rules and regulations. Best to let the Ministry of Civil Affairs deal with this in the proper manner. If a couple of outlanders like us get involved, we might just end up muddying the waters, even with the best of intentions. We came here to enjoy ourselves, remember? We don't want to get our priorities mixed up. Oh, and look at that. The storytellers taking the stage. It is said that the sky's the limit for the aspirational soul. But alas, for the woes of the world are equally limitless. No such stranger to woes was Huang Guang, a man who, having suffered countless injustices at the hands of his fellow men, forsook them to dwell among the mountains and rivers. Yet fate fortuitous found him when he entered the tutelage of an adeptus and learned many mystical arts from them. Per his master's wishes, he then returned once more to the human world, only this time with a sworn duty to cleanse the land of demons and to see justice done wherever he might tread. Is that all? Oh, I was hoping to hear the rest of the story. It was all right. I suppose the hero always has to sacrifice himself to save others, and it does make for some good storytelling. But it leaves you wondering how he really feels about the whole thing. Did he ever have second thoughts? Only he can know, I suppose. Oh, I see the show is over. Yeah, I saw Dr. Baiju. Looks like it was a scam after all. Then what are you waiting for? Don't just stand there. You need to report this to the Ministry of Civil Affairs right away. Hold on. Let's not lose our cool. Get your story straight first, so you can give them a clear and detailed account of events in the order that they occurred. And one more thing. Do you still have a way to contact this guy? 
Well, I'd arranged to meet him at the Yunshang Tea House once I've withdrawn the next sum of Mora, so I suppose he'll still be waiting on that. Okay, so you've got another meeting lined up. Hmm. Uh, I've got no one to blame but myself for this. I can't believe I was so gullible. I guess the world isn't made for naive simpletons like me. Young lady, you're a good person, and I'm touched by your words of comfort. Still, it's up to me to find a way to get my Mora back. The consequences are mine alone to bear. <laughs> At my age, I'm sure I should be comforting the young with words of wisdom rather than the other way around. What does that say about how I've spent my life? Hmm... It's obvious, isn't it? He needs to report the case to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Huh. Come with me. I am quite curious. How does our chivalrous martial arts hero intend to come to Captain Wu's rescue here? There are countless victims of injustice in the world. We can't try to help each and every one of them, can we? Oh, ho, ho. I'm surprised. I didn't know you thought of me as someone who helps other people unconditionally. I'm genuinely flattered. But we both know that I'm not that kind of person, really. Your logic is very straightforward and quite endearing in its simplicity. But I like how you think. So I'll indulge your martial arts hero aspirations for now. Captain Wu, how would you feel about owing me one more favor? I'm sorry, Captain Kaya? Let's say, hypothetically speaking, I found a way to recover your Mora that would leave the man who defrauded you feeling angry and frustrated, but give him no way to get back at you. If it could be done, and the only cost was owing me yet another favor, what would you say? What exactly are you getting at? The Traveler here is adamant that you should ask me for another favor. Personally, I blame the Storyteller. After the inspiring tale of Bravebeard, she's all gung-ho about playing hero and righting this injustice once and for all. Captain Kaya, young lady, I... Thank you. I will humbly accept your kindness. All right. Now here's what I'm thinking. All right. Then it's settled. Per our brave hero's plan, Let's rendezvous at Yenshang Tea House tomorrow. You want to learn some Favonia's blade work? All right then, I'll teach you. Oh yes, I'll teach you all right. Mark my words. Ah, you're here. Good. I'll head upstairs first, and you join me in a bit. You've got nothing to worry about. As long as this lucky coin's in my hands, it'll do as it's told. Before I toss the coin, I'll get our guy to bet heads or tails. Then it's your turn to bet. Now remember, if I touch my chin, you bet heads. If I touch my forehead, you go for tails. Waiting for someone? As long as you follow the rules of the tea house, you're welcome here. Please be our guest. Hmm. What do we have here? More speed. Hmm. 
From the way you describe it, Liyue does sound like an attractive place to settle. Perhaps I might have to make the move here after all. All that awaits me back in Mondstadt is a horde of insufferable sycophants. Truly tedious. The reason I left home in the first place was because I was reluctant to simply live off of my inheritance. I understand. For one as ambitious as yourself, Mr. Rich, living off of the family fortune must feel like the dullest existence in the world. Um, what are you doing? It's common courtesy to introduce yourself. Can't you see we got here first? They're running out of tables, huh? <laughs> Looks like this location's getting too small for them. Very well. I'll make an exception for you this one time. Let's hope the tea, at least, won't disappoint me. So, my friend, what's your name? Here is the tea that you ordered. Please enjoy. Ugh. This tea is... Uh, never mind. Mr. Bai, this has been a most pleasant and insightful conversation. I consider it good fortune that I encountered such a refined gentleman as yourself so far from home. Please allow me to pay for the tea. <laughs> yes, good fortune indeed. In that case, I must thank you for your generosity. You there. I'll get yours too. Oh, you can't tell? My family's lived in Mondstadt for generations. I got bored sitting around at home and decided to set off on a journey to expand my horizons. The sights of Liyue Harbor are rather spectacular. I've half a mind to buy a waterfront property here so I can come vacationing every year. That would be quite nice. If the family would spare me a little loose change, I could even invest in an antique shop or two so I have something to do during the day. And the point of life is to enjoy yourself. If something makes me happy, it's worth every mora. Mr. Rich, just to clarify, that's quite a large sum of mora, as far as the common woman is concerned. It's understandable that our friend over here feels out of her league. The name's Albert. Surname Rich. But only the servants in the house address me as Mr. Rich. Now that we're so well acquainted, Mr. Bai, please just call me Albert. <laughs> Albert does have a nice ring to it. It is my honor to become friends with someone of your... caliber. You flatter me. What say you to acting as my guide during my time in Liyue? I'll pay you handsomely, of course. Naturally, board and lodging would be included. And I could pay you in the region of... 50,000 mora per day? No need, my good friend. I shan't be so vulgar as to take your mora. We're both men of character. The pleasure of your ongoing acquaintance shall be ample reward in itself. To join a noble gentleman on his travels is a rare opportunity. Please, let me draft up an exact itinerary. I'll make sure to give you the experience of a lifetime. You there. You're welcome to join us if you want. Which clan did you say you were with? The... Hoo-ha clan or something? goo ha huh? huh? Strange choice of name. Gotta say, I've been in Liyue for a while now. This is the first I'm hearing of them. I guess they're one of these obscure ones who keep to themselves. Yes, well, there are many martial arts clans and factions in Liyue. It's only natural that you haven't become acquainted with all of them. Ha, <laughs> fair enough. Still, weird name. Bet they have some even weirder practices. Seriously, though, what kind of skills do you guys train anyway? It's all for show, right? I saw some people performing a few tricks down at the wharf. Is it that kind of thing?
I already told the server to put it on my tab. Don't bother getting her to split the bill. It'll only complicate things. Young lady, there's no need to take things so seriously. Why don't you loosen up and enjoy the free drink? Are you trying to make a point by throwing my generosity back in my face? All right then. What if I say your bill is mine and don't let you pay? Uh, please, my friends, let's not get so worked up. Yin Chong Tea House is no venue for a duel. We'll all get escorted right out the door. You young people have hot tempers, I understand that. But there's no need to come to blows over a few words taken to heart when there are far more diplomatic ways to resolve the dispute. Did I hear that right? So you'll only pay for yourself if you win, but I'll get the check for the three of us if you lose. It's not that I care about the Mora. After all, I offered to pay for everyone's drinks in the first place. No, what I find truly absurd is your refusal to play fair. I demand that you also pay for three if you win. Huh, fine. You can have your apology if you win, but on one condition. We'll do the best of three, and the winner pays for the table. Well, as long as you're no longer raring to fight, peace begets wealth, as the elders used to say. <laughs> Why do you join us, Mr. Bai? Let's entertain this gal for a sec. We don't want her to think you're stingy. Uh, but I wasn't even a part of your argument. What are you trying to say, Mr. Bai? Whose side are you on here? I, uh, of course, I'm on, uh... And anyway, it's no big deal if you win. It's just a few cups of tea, after all, so you can just take it from your fees as my guide. Uh, all right then. I suppose it's not all that different from the dice gambling games I used to play in my youth. If it's just for a few drinks, you can count me in. All right, now we're talking. Okay, now that we've agreed on the rules, how should we do this coin toss? After all, a Mora coin looks the same on both sides. Well, that should be simple enough. Here, I'll take this coin and ask the counter to draw a line on one side. You two can wait for me. Young lady, I can see that you haven't spent many years in the real world. You take everything far too personally. I, too, only met this Mondstadt millionaire by complete chance today, but we're getting along just fine. I actually came here to meet with a business partner to count the cash from two recent investments when this gentleman struck up a conversation with me. In the real world, you've got to keep up appearances. There's no need to offend the rich. After all, if you keep them happy, you can probably make some more off of them, too. You young people are much too impulsive. It pays to keep a level head. Just so we're clear, let's say the marked side is heads and the unmarked side is tails. Everyone has to pick a side before the coin toss. Oh. And no take-backs. We should also take turns tossing the coin. Sounds fair to me. Why don't you do the first toss, Albert? All right, then. I'll start us off. Here we... Oh! <laughs> Wait. I nearly forgot to collect everyone's bets. Mr. Bai, heads or tails? Hmm, I suppose the choice is arbitrary since it's a 50-50 chance. I'll go with Tails. Let me think. I'll also go with Tails. What about you? Heads or Tails? Oh, darn, I won. Lucky me, I guess. <laughs> I won as well. <laughs> Guess there might be a formal apology in the cards after all. Hmm. I have a suggestion. If one of us loses twice in a row, they should get knocked out while the other two carry on playing to decide the winner. 
Otherwise, with three of us playing, it'll start to get difficult to keep track of who's won the most times. I flipped the coin last time, so why don't you go next? I don't want you blaming my coin tossing skills if you guess wrong this turn. Here. Now just wait a second, my dear friends. Please let me do the second toss. Oh? Anxious to take your turn, Mr. Bai? You are both young, and I've already seen your short tempers for myself. If Albert loses this round and this young lady wins, you'll be tied. And before you know it, you'll be at each other's throats again. Well, that's not my only consideration, either. You two may be too young to know this, but I've been around the block a few times. What's to say this isn't a trick coin, hmm? In dice games, people use all sorts of methods to rig the game. Some even fit the dice with mechanisms that give them whichever result they want. If Albert wins the next round, and you, young lady, lose for the second time in a row, then the third round will just be a tiebreaker between him and me, and you won't get your apology to the Guhua clan. If that happens only for you to then find out that the coin was rigged all along, you're sure to accuse me of working with Albert to scam you while mocking the Guhua clan. I can only imagine the kind of vengeful warpath that would put you on. A purely hypothetical scenario, of course, but one that I'm bringing up now to avoid any misunderstanding further down the road. Go on, give me the coin. I'll show you how to check if it's been rigged. Very diligent of you indeed, Mr. Bai. Looks like I chose the right person to be my guide. Here, take it. A rigged coin will always be a little heavier than a normal coin, you see. Yeah, this one seems perfectly normal to me, however. But don't take it from me. Why don't you test it for yourself? What's your bet this time, Mr. Bai? I'll stick with tails. Tails, huh? <laughs> well, you seem to have a feel for this, so I guess I'll match your bet again this round. Tails it is. And you? Hmm. Well, my luck's still just about holding out. <laughs> the three of us are now tied, so no one drops out. Certainly better than Albert and I going head to head in the final round. Mm-hmm. Well, here you go. What'll it be, Mr. Bai? Mmm, it's a tough decision this time. <laughs> That's what makes it fun, isn't it? Anyway, there's no need to stress. What's the cost of a few cups of tea compared to 50,000 I'll be paying you every day? Uh, you make a good point. All right, I'll take heads. Okay, and now it's my turn to guess. Not that the outcome matters either way to me. I won't even notice the more is gone. Whatever. I'll take tails. Oh, why did it have to be heads? This whole thing started because you two got into a spat, and now I'm the one that has to foot the bill. Hmm. What say you to another round? Sure, why not? I'm having fun. I can go for as many rounds as you want. <laughs> what a miserly person. Do as you please. The two of us can play. But Albert, all the fun of gambling is in the stakes involved. What say you to throwing a little loose change into the pot? Ah, oh, come on now. No need to walk on eggshells here. Let's keep it simple, shall we? If you guess right, I pick up the tab. But if you guess wrong, I'm afraid it's still on you. Uh, sure. That's exactly what I was thinking. Well, here's the coin. You can toss first. I'll take heads. Hmm. I'll choose... Wouldn't it defeat the whole purpose of betting if you guessed the same as me? This is a two-person game now. Surely one of us has to guess heads and the other tails. All right, all right. It all comes down to luck, after all. 
I'll take tails. Ooh, looks like Rex Lapis has smiled upon me today after all. <laughs> Thank you for the tea, Albert. <laughs> Look at you getting so giddy over some chump change. It's like you've never gambled with real money before, my old man. That's a real rush, I'm telling you. This is nothing by comparison. In fact, I'm starting to get a little bored. Well, um, in that case, would you care for another game? Sure. Let's up the stakes a little this time. Shall we say 50,000? Oh, maybe that's a little on the high side. What, 50,000? But that's just a single day's guide pay for you. All right. I'll bet tails. Great, then I'll bet heads. No take backs. <clears throat> heads. Tails. Oh, how unfortunate. I shouldn't have gotten greedy. After all, in the long run, gambling is always a losing game. <laughs> 50,000 more. Uh, my goodness. Uh, Albert, I'm terribly sorry, but as it happens, I forgot to bring my coin purse with me today. Uh, could you perhaps take this 50,000 out of my guide fees? Uh, call it an advance payment. That would make us even. Advance payment? <laughs> Sorry, I'm afraid that's not my style. It'll have to be cash. Ha <laughs> this day just getting better and better. Well, so be it. Fifty thousand. Um, let me see what cash I have on me. Just fifty thousand? That's not what we agreed on. Huh? What are you talking about? I think you'll find that our bet was for 50,000. No, it wasn't. The amount was one million. <sighs> one million? Are you insane? Come on now, Albert. Be serious. A million here and a million there might be all fun and games to you rich types, but to ordinary folk like myself, this is no laughing matter. I'm being perfectly serious. I know what I said, and what I said was one million mora. You're lying through your teeth! Hey, young lady, you tell him. Did you hear him say one million at any point during our bet? Oh, huh? What the? I'm not deaf, you know. I swear I heard fifty thousand. Wait. Oh, I see. You two are in this together. I never met either of you before today, and out of nowhere you suddenly roped me into betting over a coin toss. And now you're accusing me of owing you one million mora. Huh? Do you have any idea who you're trying to cheat? I know all the tricks in the book. I can't believe a couple of beginners like you managed to get this far. <laughs> Well, don't you try to celebrate just yet. You amateurs have a lot to learn about the art of the con. Do you really think that nobody else will have heard all the commotion we just made? All I need is one witness, and this little scheme of yours falls apart. Frauds! Frauds, I say! These two kids are trying to scam me out of my hard-earned mora! Hostess! Oh, hostess, come quickly! How pathetic. What is going on here? If you can't abide by our rules, you're not welcome at Yen Shang Tea House. I don't care what the issue is. You don't get to make a racket like that in here. Halberd! Fang! Wait, wait, don't throw me out! These two con artists are trying to steal my mora. You can't let them get away with it! Well, let's take this somewhere else. I don't want any of you disturbing the other guests. Okay, you two. Care to explain yourselves? Gladly. 
He's making up completely spurious claims. We were betting Mora over a few coin tosses, and now he wants to back out. In the land of contracts of all places. He won 250,000 from me, then another 800,000 from the both of us. Now he's refusing to pay up the measly 50,000 that he lost in the final round. Okay, so after settling up, a total of one million Mora should have changed hands. Sounds plausible enough. It's a complete pack of lies. Hostess, if you don't believe me, ask anyone else in the tea house. These kids were so loud. I guarantee you everybody in that room knows the true story. Sorry to interrupt you all, but you're witnesses to the situation here. Is what Mr. Bai says true? Oh, thank goodness you're finally here. What took you so long? That old guy's been bragging about the mora he's won so loudly, I'm surprised the whole street didn't hear him. I was about to report him to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Leave me out of this. I want nothing to do with gamblers and scammers. Please, just bring me my check. Our new owner laid down the law not too long ago. We turn a blind eye towards casual games of dice, but there is zero tolerance for any explicit gambling with real mora. Return any winnings to the party you took them from, and we'll say that none of this ever happened. Otherwise, I'll have to bring in the Millilith, and I can assure you that they take a more hard line on this kind of thing than we do. Why should I have to give them any Mora? I don't have any Mora on me. Oh, but I think you do. Two investments, was it? One of them to the tune of exactly one million as it happens. Oh. And don't forget you still need to pay the tab. You... Wait... How did you... Halberd! Fang! There's a gentleman here that I'd really like you to meet. Please, please don't! I'll pay, all right? This was never your Mora to begin with. We'll be returning it to its rightful owner now. What did you think, Captain Wu? Could you hear clearly from your corner on the second floor? Yes, everything. I... I can't thank you two enough. Wu... This was your doing, wasn't it? You and this monster planned the whole thing! Along with that blonde one. And all the customers on that floor were in on it too, weren't they? I know where you live, and I know what your wife looks like, and your pretty little daughter, too. You crossed the wrong man today! Who'd be scared of a crook like you? I'll take you on any day of the week. <laughs> well, let's see how long that false bravado of yours will last. Oh, look at that. He figured it out. Guess he's not as dumb as we thought. Don't you two get cocky either. Just you wait. I will hunt you down. My apologies for having to leave this question until you'd vacated the premises. But I couldn't have things escalate inside the tea house. I hope you can understand our position. I noticed that all the guests on the second floor were present before you took your seats, then left almost immediately after you did. Would I be correct in saying you were looking to set this man up? Wait, so you saw through it right away? Under normal circumstances, we would never tolerate a scheme like this taking place on our grounds, as it risks damaging our owner's reputation. However, I understand that our owner holds the Traveler in high regard, and must have good reasons for their actions. Still, I would appreciate an explanation, if only so that I can answer to the owner. Ah, as I thought. When you're operating on someone else's turf, you run the risk of clashing with the master of the house. Thankfully, we considered that possibility before going ahead with our plan. Over to you, brave hero. You're the one with the connections in Liyue. It's your time to shine. Okay. I understand the situation now. It goes without saying that I have no wish to stand in the way of your chivalrous deeds. I'll report everything you told me to our owner. 
Well, Captain Wu, remember what I promised you? What do you think? Angry and frustrated enough for you? Excuse me, coming through. Hmm, is this the Mr. Bai you reported to us? Yes, that's him all right. The one who scammed Captain Wu.